All right. I hope you had fun, and I hope to see you again. Hello. Welcome to More Chemistry. I'm Dave Hicks. Today we're going to talk about molarity calculations, specifically dilutions today. So this is part of a two-part series on concentrations and molarity. Today I'm going to focus primarily on this down here, the uh, calculations that we do when we're using dilutions in order to prepare solutions. Ooh, that rhymed. Um, you know, this gets used around you quite a bit, especially at the soda fountain. Uh, some of you who may be been involved in the food services know that when you get uh, your favorite Coca-Cola and dispense it from that soda fountain, it starts out as a very thick and syrupy solution that is in a box. And then at the soda fountain, it gets mixed with the water, the carbonated water that is going to make up your soda. And uh, it mixes it in the correct proportions so that when you take a drink of that soda, it tastes just right. huh? Um, well, anyways, these are people who have sat around and figured out, okay, I'm going to sell this product in a very concentrated form. And then uh, we can dilute it to what the uh, consumer wants to taste. So anyways, this is involving concentrations, and uh, we've been working with molarities. We said that molarity is equal to moles per liter, and uh, it's a form of concentration. Um, I've gone over some of this before in a previous video, if you want to go back to that. I'm just kind of reviewing here. And uh, down here, I said that one of the common types of problems is, how can I dilute a solution to create a new solution at a new concentration? Well, this is an inverse proportion, and the way you set up inverse proportions is you set them up this times this is equal to this times this. Uh, it's not like a regular proportion that you set up in class where it's this over this, right, where you set up two fractions and put an equal sign between them. It's not like that. This is one where they're multiplied together. It makes it an inverse proportion. So here is an example for us on dilutions. I use this a lot when I'm mixing up acids for a lab that I need to get. The acids generally come in very concentrated forms, uh, much too dangerous to be working with many times in a regular general chemistry lab. And so to get it into a form where we can use it in a much safer environment, we will dilute that so that it's just not as corrosive uh, as the pure concentrated one. Plus, it makes it so that I can store a lot of acid in a small space in the back room and then dilute that down and use it for many, many labs, sometimes over a, a year or two. So um, this is what I do. So here's a, a, a question for us. It says, what would be the, let's start out with finding a new molarity, huh? What would be the molarity uh, of a new solution if I took uh, 250 milliliters of a 12 molar acid solution and I diluted it to 1,000 uh, milliliters or a liter, huh? So I'm going to take this very concentrated solution, 12 molar, and I'm going to take a little bit of it, and I'm going to dilute it down to make a lot more of it. But it's not going to be as concentrated. I said before that we're going to use this formula. Molarity times the volume is equal to molarity times the volume. Now over here is one side. We might call this our concentrated side. huh? And over here is our diluted side. And so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take this very large concentration and smaller volume, and we're going to figure out what it is when I make it a much bigger volume, find out what this new concentration is here. So I'm just going to plug in my information. For my concentrated one, that's the 12 molar 
times the volume here, 250 milliliters. And that's going to be equal to, and I want to know this here, uh, molarity. I'm going to put in an M here instead of an X, I think. And then times its new volume, which is the 1,000 milliliters. So on this side, I have the very concentrated small volume. And on this side, I have the less concentrated big volume. To solve this, I'm just going to isolate that M right there, divide both sides by a 1,000, right? And when I do that and crunch it out, I find that my molarity, my new molarity that I have here, I 12 times 250 divided by 1,000, and that comes out to 3. So I'll have a 3 molar solution in the end. Let's try another example where we take how many milliliters of some concentrated solution I'll need to make up the um, a new solution that is diluted. And generally, I do this quite often. So here, uh, let's say that in the back room I have some acid, and it's a 18 molar acid. And I wanted to make up 100 milliliters of just a one molar solution. I want to know how many milliliters of this 18 milliliter so, uh, molar solution will I need to make up this new diluted solution. Again, it uh, goes molarity times volume is equal to the molarity times volume. Remember, this is my concentrated side, and this time, that is the V that I'm looking for. I'm looking for the concentrated volume. And over here, this is the diluted side. And this time, that's what I know. I know my dilution. I, I need 100 milliliters of a one molar solution, a less concentrated solution. So I'm going to stick my numbers in here. 18 molar, that's my higher molar concentration. So I'm going to put that over here. I don't know what the volume is, so I'm just going to leave it as V and solve for it. On the other side, I do know that this is a, a one molar solution. And I have 100 milliliters of it. So putting that together here. Again, doing my math to get this V by itself. Got to divide both sides by 18. And so here, if I plug in my calculator, 1 times 100 divided by 18, I get that the new volume here is about 5.6 milliliters. So in my back room, I would have to measure out about 5.6 milliliters of this very high strength acid here in order to dilute it down and make it reasonable for students to be around, make just a one molar solution. That would be much safer in handling and a much smaller size for it uh, as well. All right, so just to kind of confirm things here, we've seen how to dilute. Uh, how we can use dilution formulas to calculate what new molarities are or to calculate uh, how many milliliters of something we need to make up a new solution. And um, I hope you were able to follow along with that. And good luck with your chemistry.